All right, grade five, second lesson in unit three. Remember, our big idea is to understand operations, multiplying, adding, subtracting, dividing, helps us to solve problems in the real world. Our concept today is to demonstrate an understanding of using doubling to multiply and halving to divide. This is in your connect section of unit three, lesson two. All right. Doubling and repeated doubling are strategies you can use to multiply. Begin with a fact you know. To find another fact, double one of those factors, which then doubles the product. So, for example, you know 2 times 6 is 12. If you were doubling the factor of 2 to 4, then by doubling the answer, you would get 4 times 6. So, for example, if you know that 2 times 6 is 12, and you want to know what 4 times 6 is, you've doubled this, you've multiplied it by 2, then you double this. 12 doubled is 24. So 2 times 6 is 12. Two groups of that is going to be 24. So 4 times 6 is 24. And here you can see this in a picture format. 2 times 6 is 24. Adding another group of 2 times 6 will give you 4 groups of 6, or 4 times 6. We can keep going. Say we wanted to know what 8 times 6 is. Okay, well then we need another group of 4 times 6, which was 24. 24 plus 24 is 48. So we now know that 8 times 6 is 48, because we've doubled 24 and added another 24 which gave us the 48. We now have 8, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 groups of 6. 8 groups of 6 which gives us 48. So remember the strategy is thinking of a fact you know. If you double one of those factors you also double the answer or the product. Alright, so say you know 2 times 8 and you want to find out 4 times 8. Well, if 2 times 8 is 16, 16 plus 16 is going to give you 4 times 8. 16 plus 16 is 32. So you know 4 times 8 is 32. Another way you could do that, if you know 4 times 4 is 16 and you want to find out 4 times 8, well, you've taken the 8 and doubled it. So again, you can take the 16 and double that still gives you 32. So it doesn't matter which factor you double. You can double the 2 to 4 or you can double the 4 to 8. Either way, you'll still both end up with 32. Having or cutting in half and repeated having, cutting in half again, are strategies that you can use to divide. So, for example, say we were trying to find 64 divided by 4. Well, you think in your head 4, time, four is 2 times 2. So if you divide 4 by 2, so to divide by 4, I can divide by 2 and then divide by 2 again. So what is 64, the whole group of 64, divided into two groups? Hmm. Well, I can think, okay, 64. 60 divided into two groups is 30. 4 divided into 2 groups is 2. Altogether, there's going to be 32 to be half of 64. That means I found out now what 64 divided by 2 is. If I want to find out 64 divided by 4, I'm going to have to cut this 32 in half again. So 32 in half, well, 3 in half is 15. Uh, sorry, 30 in half is 15, and 2 in half is 1. 15 plus 1 is 16. I've cut it in half twice now, so I've divided it by 2 once. Now I've divided by 2 again, which means I've actually divided by 4. So I know that 64 divided by 4 is 16. Sometimes drawing a picture is really helpful. So you could draw out your 6, uh, sorry, you're trying to find 64 divided by 4. So you need to have groups of 4. So 1, 2, 3, 4. And divide it. Hmm, I don't love their picture. Because it should be 64 into groups of 4. And they don't have it into groups of 4 here. Anyway, it still does work. But sometimes a picture with groups of 4 would be better. Alright, trying that one more time. Now we're... Oops, sorry, one sec. Now 
we're trying to divide 96 by 8. Okay, well, I might think I'm going to divide 96 by 2. So I'm cutting it in half once. 90 um, 6 by 2. So 90 divided by 2, well that's 45. 6 divided by 2, well that's 3. So altogether there's 48 in uh, half of 96. I've divided it by 2. Now I'm going to, I want to divide it by 8. So I need to get by 8, I need to divide by 2, and divide by 2 again. That's only dividing by 4 now. Um, so I'm going to take my 48, divide it into two groups. Well, 40 into two groups is 20. 8 into two groups is 4, so it's 24. Uh, but that's only divided by 4, because 2 times 2 is 4, so I've divided it by 4. 4 divided by 2, well, that's 8 groups, so I need to divide by 2 once more. 20 divided into two groups is 10. 4 divided into two groups is 2, so that's 12. Um, as you can see, what, what's happened there is 98 divided by 8. Well, 8 is like 4 times 2, and 4 is like 2 times 2, and with, that's where those three groups of 2 came, came from. 2 times 2 is 4, 4 times 2 is 8, which gives us that 8 there. So I've divided it um, once, twice, and three times to get my final one. All right, to practice. Multiply, then double one factor. Oh, sorry. Multiply, then double one factor and write a new multiplication fact. Draw an array. So we'll do the first one together just in case you're not sure how to do this one. A, so it wants you to take this and figure out what it is. 4 times 8. Well, 4 times 8 is 32. If I want to double that, I could go 8 times 8. Well, that really just means 32 plus 32. Well, 30 plus 30 is 60. 2 plus 2 is 4. It's 64. We could draw an array, and an array is the picture. So we're going to start with four groups of 8. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. I need four groups of that. So this is an array because it has four groups of eight. Four groups, one, two, three, four groups of eight. Now to double that, we're going to repeat that basically. So again, I'm going to have the exact same thing on the other side because I'm doubling it. Double it and doubling it means two of the exact same thing. And now if I were to count them all out, I would see that I have... 64. Press pause and try 5 times 7, then 6 times 4, and 4 times 4. Go ahead and press pause and try those now. All right, let's take a look. So 5 times 7 um, is 35. If we want to double one of those, well, we could go 10 times 7. I'm going to double the 5. Um, which means it's going to be 35 plus 35. Well, 30 plus 30 is 60. 5 plus 5 is 10. Oop, that means my 60 has to become 60 plus 10, which is then 70. To draw a picture, I'm going to need five rows of seven. And it doesn't matter what direction we go. Two rows of seven. three rows of seven, four rows of seven, five rows of seven, and then I would have to do that all over again here. I would need five rows of seven to get my total. All right, let's take a look at six times four. I'm going to double the four because that will make it easier, and I'm going to go six, find out what six times eight is. Well, six times four is 24, so I know I'd have to go 24 plus 24 because I'm doubling it. 20 plus 20 is 40, 4 plus 4 is 8, so 48. And again, I would have to have 6 rows of 4, or 4 rows of 6. Um, two, 
two rows, three rows, four rows. And then to double that, I would have to do that all over again. Exactly the same. And if I counted them all, I would see that I actually do have 48. Let's take a look at this last one. 4 times 4, well that's 16, so if I wanted to know what 4 times 8 was, I would have to double the 16, 16 plus 16. Uh, 10 plus 10 is 20, 6 plus 6 is 12, 20 plus 12, 32. And again, I could draw out my picture. So how then could 4 times 4 help us find 4 times 8? Well, if we double one of our um, factors, we also then double our product or our answer. So 4 times 2 is 8. So then 16 times 2 will give us the answer, which is 32. All right, now you're going to press pause and you're going to try repeated halving. Repeated halving can be a little bit more tri tricky because you don't always know how many times you need to have it um, or cut it in half. So look carefully at that. You're going to use repeated halving to find 56 divided by four. So you're gonna divide by two. And how does that help? Well, that cuts it in half once. And then you're going to have to cut it in half twice because two groups of two is four. If you then wanted to divide 56 by 8, how many times would you have to cut it in half? How many times would you have to divide by 2? How many groups of 2 are there in 8? Those are the things you need to consider. So you're working on dividing 56 by 4, and then also taking 56 and dividing it by, oops, sorry, 8. Dividing it by 8. Let me rewrite that. All right, press pause. And try that now. 56 divided by 4, 56 divided by 8. And if you need to, draw out 56. Cut it into 4 groups. Draw out 56. Cut it into 8 groups. Remember those groups need to have equal number of pieces. Go ahead and try that now. Alright, well let's take a look. So 56 divided by 4. I'm going to start by dividing by 2. Uh, 50 divided by 2 is 25, 6 divided by 2 is 3, so 28 altogether, or you can draw out your picture if you want. Um, I've only divided it in 2 once, that's not enough. I need to do it 2 times, because 2 times 2 equals 4. So I'm going to take that 28 and I have to divide it by 2. Well, 20 into 2 groups is, oops, 20 into 2 groups is 10, uh, 2 into 2 groups is 1 in each group, so that would be, sorry, not 2 into 2 groups, 8 into 2 groups, 20 into 2 groups is 10, 8 into 2 groups is 4, 10 plus 4 is 14, 14 plus 14 is 28, so I now know 56 divided by 4 is 14 because I've taken it and I split it into two different halves. How would that happen if it was 56 divided eight by 8? How many halves would you have to do? Well, four, 8 divided by 2 is 4. 4 divided by 2 is 2. So you'd have to do it three times. So we've done it twice already. Now we have to do 14 divided by 2, which is 7. And now we know 56 divided by 8 is 7. Perfect. And again, I could have drawn out the pictures and cut them into equal groups. That might work quite well for you if you're having a hard time doing it mentally in your head. All right, at this point, you are on to practicing. You're practicing how to double, to multiply, and how to half to divide. Page 78 and 79, numbers 2, 3, 5, and 7. Uh, make sure you show your work. There is no calculator. And you must show your work. No calculator, no multiplication table. You're trying to work on your basic facts and different ways that you can find them out so that they will start to pop in your head.